guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, I'll be going over how I made most of the sounds in the track you just heard, um, which is inspired by rival consoles. Uh, so let's get into it. So we're going to start off by normal by taking a look at the drums. So this is the full beat. And the first little bit we're going to look at are these samples here. So I'm just going to rattle through some of the sounds. Um, I don't want to go into the processing because uh, I didn't really do anything on these apart from a bit of EQ and reverb. So this is quite a heavy kick. Got quite a thuddy sound. And there's quite a few samples going in here with the snares. So the first one is this, has a bit of a tone to it. That's got a bit of click. And these were just for some more high-end uh, white noise. That had a bit of delay. And then a couple of rims. And a clap. So all together. And here we have the hats. Quite a simple beat. Um, now for some of the samples, I just messed around with the pitch and the mold just to time stretch the samples to either uh, bring them down in um, pitch or bring them up and then messed around with uh, some of these as well to give it a more distorted um, kind of feel to it. And as I said, I didn't really do much with the processing. So I'm going to move on to the other sounds now. So these are some organic uh, samples I've got. And they're relatively random noises. Just follow recordings that I got from Splice and had a bit of uh, sort of percussive elements to it. Like crunchy sounds and stuff. And I just use them to layer up the actual beat. So without. Just makes the sound, um, the drums a bit more organic and um, a bit more interesting. And also this one here. So this is somebody writing on like a, a chalkboard. And then just drag that into the, the playlist here and cut it up to fit with the beat. It's quite subtle, but again, just adds a nice extra low element there. And you've got some shakers. Pretty straightforward. And then these two here, these are a bit more interesting. Now I've done this uh, technique before in uh, my John Hopkins video and uh, basically what I've done is um, got a couple of loops that were furled loops already. So this is the heavier one. And then uh, a softer loop. I think that's with like uh, brushes. And then uh, press Control L to turn that into a loop and then just dragged it into the granulizer, which we have two of here. So that's a loop in there. And then just played a, a C note, a C5, keep it at the same pitch. And then just experimented and messed around with these knobs here. And I did that for this one as well. And then I just recorded them, uh, dragged them in. So this is the, the loop here. Yeah, and once I had that, put that into the playlist. And then 
spent a fair bit of time just rearranging it, chopping it up and then putting in different bits here and there until uh, it sounded okay with the rest of the beat. So without... Oops. And with... Simples. And also had a, an LFO on this one here. So if you just right click and go um, create automation clip and then it'll create something like this and then you can just go in and uh, mess around with these and create your own LFOs. Uh, so instead of drawing that in, uh, you can just do, do that real quick and then that will pan the sound left and right, which you can hear here. And then just stretch that out as long as you need. Now that's pretty much it for the drums. Um, it will sound a bit different if you download the, the project file, uh, but what we'll do is re replace all the all the VSTs that aren't third party, uh, sorry, that are third party. Um, so they're just uh, in there with the stock plugins that you get with FL Studio. Um, and yeah, I'll we'll just try and get it sounding as similar as uh, the original here. So the bass line is very simple, just following the, the root notes of the chords, and it sounds like this. And I just made it using the 3x oscillator. Pretty standard with uh, a saw wave, and that was the volume envelope uh, filter taken down to around there, about 30%, and then I just had some distortion. Um, the growth speed was here just as um, a volume LFO, like a sidechain, um, pretty much. And then uh, EQ taken out some of the low mids and taken off the top, so without the effects. A bit bland. And that was the bass. So now we'll get into the pads. So this is based off uh, a pretty standard uh, detune saw pad that you hear quite a lot in Rival Consoles music. Didn't sound as good as his would, as uh, they pretty much always come from analog synths. Um, well, you can still make one sound fairly nice using the 3X oscillator. Um, all the practices are, are pretty much similar for any VST you would use. Um, so I've got two uh, saw waves. The second one is taken down to about 30% and is an octave lower. Then I automated the detune on the, the first oscillator. As you can hear. And then also automated the filter. And I would also record in some automation just so it sort of moves throughout the track. And then on that, um, I had a little tape emulation and I think that was just adding a bit of distortion. Gross beat again, uh, just for a, a sort of pumping effect and some reverb. Cool, pretty straightforward. Uh, over here you got a bit of a drone. And I made that just by recording in um, the first two notes on this lead here, which we'll get into in a wee sec. I just recorded a, a short section of that and looped it and then dragged it in and uh, yeah, I just used it as a drone. And that's that. 
So this sound here is loosely modeled off the uh, chord sound in recovery. Loosely. And it sounds like this. And again, uh, to make that, we're using the trusty old friends, uh, the three X oscillator. So the first oscillator is saw wave, and then a square wave, taking down one octave. And this is a bit louder than the first, so that's a sixty-five percent. And then we've got a bit of white noise. Uh, the phase uh, randomness is taken up to twenty percent. First, we'll take off all the effects actually, and then coming in here. We got the volume envelope, like so, a tiny bit of attack, short decay, with the curve set to around there, and a bit of release, and the mod X, um, similar sort of envelope, just taken down to around here, and I controlled the the filter using the amount. So in the intro, it's uh, really far down here. and then builds up and down uh, throughout the track. I also automated uh, the release, um, and the filter usually stayed around there and was just on low pass too. Uh, then if you go into the settings tab, I did use some key tracking um, on the volume. So that was um, effects in the mod X. So basically what that means is if you play a quieter note, with the velocity, uh, sorry, the velocity further down here, then it rolls off some of the high frequencies, um, making it more similar to uh, the characteristics of a, an actual instrument like a piano or a guitar. If you hit like a really soft note, then you're not as getting, uh, you're not getting as many of those high frequencies coming through, and it makes it sound a bit more analog, a bit more natural. Um, and you can do that for the volume as well, but I just had that going for the, the filter. And if we take a look at the notes here. So these that have got kind of closer together, they kind of roll up like that. So these quieter notes will have uh, less high frequency going on. And you can kind of hear uh, how the fre frequencies kind of bounce around a bit um, with these uh, higher velocity notes. And yeah, they display like a pretty standard sort of chord plug thing going on. And then I've got quite a few effects. Uh, so starting with this one, uh, this is a tape emulation. Um, they were doing this one for free. I'll leave a link for it. I'm not sure if it's still free. Um, but it does sound pretty nice. And I just use that to add a, a bit of white noise. So before. And then a compressor. A bit more compression with the sangodizer just to beef up some of the low mids. And then this was a free um, envelope shaper. So you'd often use this on drums just to create a bit more, um, you hear more of the, the transients. So I'll just show you what it sounds like. Yeah, it creates more of an attack at the start of the sound. Um, and there is one that comes with FL Studio. Uh, so it's called the Transient Processor, and that's the one that comes with FL. And then I had a bit of distortion on that. Limiter, which I think I was just using as a compression again. And then a delay, reverb, and EQ. That's it for the chords. So the first little lead sound is actually a snare. Sounds like this. 
And I think it started off as like an 808 kind of sound. And then I pitched it until it was in uh, tune. And then just played the root notes of the track with a bit of EQ. Um, so that's boost in, I think, a C note, um, which is the, the key of the song. And that's to give it some uh, extra tone. And then, yeah, just a bit of reverb. So uh, without the effects, just sounds like a normal snare. And then here we have, um, whoops, the main lead. So that's again uh, three oscillators. First is a triangle, second a uh, saw, then one octave, and the third the white noise. Uh, that's the volume envelope and the filter envelope. And that's set to SVF uh, low pass two with the filter taken all the way down. And then you can just mess around with this one. And on top of that, I had this layer. So this is um, a percussive fit sent to the same channel. And that's to give um, a bit more transient to the start of the sound. Um, so we'll just play without. Just to make it kind of more plucky. Um, and then I had uh, this thing just panning the sound left and right. You could also automate it if you wanted to. Uh, a bit chorus, tape emulation. Again, uh, using the bittersweet to add uh, more pluckiness into it. And then delay and reverb. So just going through them. Finally, got this lead here. So this is a mainly a square wave um, with a bit of saw. The same octave. Um, volume envelope shaped like this, uh, and that is the mod X. Low pass two, and uh, quite a bit of uh, resonance with the filter taken down to around here. And then it's also got really fast uh, arpeggiate on it. So the time is 0.1, I think, and the gate all the way up. Uh, repeat twice and just auto sustain. And I just use that to add in like a couple of little bloopy bits here and there. And they're more or less copying the same notes as the, the lead over here. Cool. Now finally we're going to take a look at some of these uh, Foley recordings. Um, more or less just random sounds of uh, electrical noise, um, some natural sounds going on as well. Um, and just add a bit more um, ambience, I guess you could call it, into the the track here. Um, so the first one is like a electrical humming. And then we've got this thing, some sort of experimental noise. pretty distorted and that was just to bring in um, transitions into the song. Um, this is a factory ambience and uh, I'll just take off the effects for that. And that was just going on in the background in this uh, first part of the song and a couple of other bits and then we've got 
the humming again, and then I guess the, the seaside. There's a few bits of automated here, uh, so just brought in the volume along with the low pass filter and the high pass makes it sound a bit like a sweep. And now it's this in these uh, the bridge, and then again once the uh, sorry once the main uh, melody comes back in. Um, and that was just a way of uh, creating more interesting transitions um, and trying to keep it organic and, and sounding a bit more natural. Um, and that's pretty much it for the track. So that's it for this week. I uh, hope you find that video useful. If you have any questions regarding the project or the samples, just give me a shout. Um, and as always, I'll leave the link in the description for uh, where you can find the full track, uh, the project file, all that stuff. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining. See you next time. Laters.